welcome to our fireside. I am your hostess, Cinder. I love telling stories by the fire to my guests. So snuggle in, but beware of what goes bump in the night. After a devastating tsunami in 2011, college student Yuka Kudo traveled to Ishinomaki, a town where 6,000 people died, and asked cab drivers if they had had any unusual experiences after the disaster. Most ignored her, but seven cab drivers talked of picking up ghost passengers, and their accounts were eerily similar. According to the drivers, the ghosts, who look like normal people, would get into the cabs and give their destination, only to disappear without paying the fare. One such passenger asked her driver to take her to a district that had been wiped out by the waves. When he told her what it was like there, she asked, Have I died? When he turned around to look at her, she was gone. If you plan on visiting New Orleans, you should know that it is without question the most haunted city in America. Ghostly sightings are virtually everywhere throughout the city, particularly in the famed historic French Quarter. So many hotels claim to be haunted, but one in particular boasts a lot of ghosts. The Hotel Montelion. Sitting at 214 Royal Street, the hotel is the only high-rise building in the interior of the French Quarter. The hotel dates back to the 1800s, when Sicilian immigrant Antonio Montelion moved to New Orleans and set up shop at the site as a cobbler. He ended up taking over the nearby hotel and expanding his business and the enterprise has grown ever since. Reported ghostly sightings at the Montelion are so common, it's impossible to write about them all. Several guests have claimed to see and hear ghostly children playing in the hotel's halls, especially on the 14th floor. Additionally, based on the testimony of witnesses, the lobby area is apparently very very haunted, like poltergeist haunted. On many nights around 8 p.m., the doors of the lobby restaurant are said to mysteriously unlock and then close themselves back up. A diverse group of individuals claim to have witnessed this ghostly phenomenon. The fact that the hotel itself seems to advertise as haunted would give any even mildly skeptical person pause. If unpredictable, wily undead spirits really were roaming the halls, that seems like the sort of thing management would want to keep under wraps. More than likely, this is just another gimmick to appeal to the New Orleans, Louisiana tourist crowd who love a good gothic southern yarn. There are a number of strange, eerie circumstances surrounding the Lincoln assassination. In particular, the President seemed to have a premonition about his own death in a dream. He told friend Ward Hill Lamont about a strange dream in which he wandered unknowingly into a funeral being held in the White House's East Room. Unable to make out the face of the corpse, he asked a nearby guard who has died. Who is dead in the White House, say I? The president is his answer. He was killed by an assassin. Only a few days after, Lincoln himself was dead, felled by an assassin's bullet. His funeral was, in fact, held in the East Room of the White House. It's said that Mary Todd Lincoln's first audible words following the assassination were amazement on how the president had foreseen what would happen. 
In the years after 1865, numerous witnesses, including several future presidents, have claimed to see or interact with Lincoln's ghost, who apparently has set up permanent residence in the White House. They include Eleanor Roosevelt, who kept her study in Lincoln's former bedroom. Roosevelt said that though she never actually saw Lincoln's ghost, she felt his presence many times and believed him to be occasionally in the room with her. During the Roosevelt presidency, a number of other sightings occurred. A young clerk claimed to have seen Lincoln sitting on a bed removing a pair of boots. Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands was spending the night in the White House and claimed Lincoln woke her up by knocking at her door. Lady Grace Goodhue, the wife of Calvin Coolidge, reportedly saw Lincoln standing with his arms clasped behind his back, lost in thought and staring at the Potomac. Winston Churchill and Lyndon Johnson both joked about having had conversations with the undead Lincoln, though both also had outsized personalities and were prone to such flights of fancy. A number of other presidents, including Theodore Roosevelt, Herbert Hoover, and Harry Truman, have reported spooky or inexplicable goings-on within the White House, claiming they were the work of Lincoln. It's unclear, however, whether any of the men actually saw Lincoln's spirit with their own eyes. No Lincoln's ghost sightings have been reported from the White House since the Truman administration. Hillary Clinton, however, told Rosie O'Donnell that she sometimes feels creeped out in the White House. It's neat. It can be a little creepy, you know. They think there's a ghost there. It's a big old house, and when the lights are out, it is dark and quiet, and any movement at all catches your attention. Post-Truman, there were also numerous renovations being made to the property. Perhaps Lincoln finally moved on. He has, however, also been spotted in Ford's Theater, where he was shot, and in the burial grounds in Illinois that houses his remains. The Hotel del Coronado opened in 1888 in the city of Coronado, California, just across the bay from San Diego. It was the largest resort hotel in the world upon first opening and the first resort to use electrical lighting. It's also a rare surviving example of an all wooden Victorian style beach resort. On November the 24th in 1892, a woman named Kate Morgan, using the alias Lottie Bernard, checked in to the hotel in room 304. The same room is still available today, but now it's numbered 3,327. She claimed she was there to meet with her brother, a doctor, who was treating her for stomach cancer. Five days after checking in, Morgan was found dead on the steps of the hotel, leading down to the beach, apparently of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. It appears the story she told the clerks when checking in about her doctor brother and her illness was also untrue. Instead, she was married to a mail carrier from Nebraska named Tom Morgan and was believed to be in San Diego to meet up with a brother who was a professional gambler. It has often been suggested that the couple was in fact con artists or that Kate had checked into the hotel planning to have an abortion performed. The case has remained a subject of fascination and conjecture ever since. In the 1980s, lawyer Alan May speculated that Morgan may have been murdered 
claiming that the coroner found a bullet in her head that did not match the gun she owned. The case was never reopened, however, and remains officially a suicide. Morgan's ghost is thought to continue to haunt the Del Coronado to this very day. Typically, via strange goings-on in room 3327 where she stayed. Strange presences have also been felt in rooms 3502 and 3312 over the years. The hotel's official website even makes passing mention of the ghost, and the hotel's heritage department at one time released a full book and investigation on the case, The Beautiful Stranger the ghost of Kate Morgan and the Hotel Del Coronado. The book has since been removed from circulation. This next story comes from a psychologist. One of my schizophrenic clients said he was seeing a girl in his room and he said she was talking to him. We believed it to be a hallucination, as he was living alone. The doctor I was with decided to challenge his delusion and had him take a picture of her so we could meet her. During the next visit, he brought a picture, and yes, she was there. To our astonishment and horror, there was a picture of him on the couch with a strange, creamy ghost like image of a girl hovering behind him, shrouding him in white like wings or hair, very light in color, but subtle shimmering image. What was eerie was seeing him sitting on the couch with his head down looking depressed looking. She was literally haunting him. All of our jaws hit the floor. You could hear a pin drop. Everyone examined the picture and we could tell it was real. This was a very low functioning patient and could not have shopped it. Shit just got real. We were haunted. The doctor in utter amazement knew medication wouldn't treat this and actually told the patient, I can't help you with this. You're going to have to see clergy about this. Once, I was staying over a friend's house and was sleeping in her bed. She had a large double bed pushed up against the wall, so we both slept in there. I slept with my back facing the room that night, with my friend sleeping next to me. About midway through the night, I started having a very elaborate dream about work. The dream wasn't anything significant, just something stupid. Then, as it progressed, it became more ominous. A man wearing a mask, similar to a Japanese kabuki mask, was chasing me around my workplace, attempting to kill me. Then, at some point, I began to wake up, as I felt someone standing directly behind me. The dream progresses again, and the man has found me. At that point, my wakeful state began to set it further, as I could feel something gently stroking my hair. Terrified, I laid there, slightly disorientated, as I was still somewhat in my dream. Then I hear a gravelly voice from behind me say, Hello, little girl. And a number of other things I can't remember as well as the sensation of someone still stroking my hair. I'm fully awake at this point, but lying still as I can be, with my eyes pressed shut, fearing for my life. Finally, I mustered up the courage to sit up in bed and look around the room. There was no one there. To this day, I can still remember the deep, gravelly sound of his voice. Hello, little girl. The thing that made it real for me is when I told the dream to my friend. She's recounted several 
harrowing tales of seeing an older man's spirit wandering around her house. When I was about 13 or 14, I lived in a normal block house in a suburban neighborhood with my family. We were told by the previous tenant that her husband had died in the house, but we weren't told specifically where. One night, after I turned the lights off to go to sleep, I heard a loud rustling noise and then a bang that caused me to jump up and turn the lights on. Everyone in the house heard it and ran into the hallway to see if I was okay. As I looked into my room to see what the noise was, I saw my jewelry box, which had a set of doors on the front which latched shut, fully open with all the drawers hanging open. I threw that thing in the closet so quick and never pulled it out again. I still heard things in that house. One night I was watching something funny on TV in my room and heard a man seemingly sitting right next to me, laugh in my ear as clear as day. It wasn't from the TV. When visiting my sister's college, she sent me into the theater to get some stuff for her. It was after dark and the building was locked, but she lent me her keys. Now, she told me that the place had a reputation for being haunted. But being the skeptic I am, I took the keys and hustled off without a second thought. I let myself in, headed to the closet she said her stuff was in, and someone walked up behind me. No kidding, I could hear the footsteps, feel the floorboards move, and hear them creak. Heck, I could even hear the rustle of fabric moving and there was just this indefinable sense of there being someone else there. You know how you can tell when someone's walked into a room, even if you didn't really see or hear them? Yeah. Well, I turned around fully expecting to have to explain why I was in a locked building after hours, and there was no one there. After I shot myself, I started singing at the top of my lungs. To mask the now ominous silence, grabbed my sister's stuff and bolted out of the building. My sister apologized for days, and I never went into that building alone again, day or night. I am pretty sure I am actually the only person in my family that does not have a personal ghost story. I find my family to be very intelligent people that would not make this up, but it's also hard to imagine something that you yourself have never experienced, you know? So here are some of their stories, which are pretty creepy. My mother lived in a haunted house when she was very young. They feel that there was more than one spirit in the house. Apparently, the house had a colored history. Once, my mother woke up in the middle of the night, and a dark figure was messing with the items on her bedside table. She assumed it was my grandmother, and asked her what she was doing. A voice in her head told her to go back to sleep, and she did. The next morning, she asked her mother what she had been doing in her room that night, and my grandmother confirmed that it was not her in there. They considered their parents' room, I believe, to be the most haunted. Once, my mother and uncle were, I guess, having some sort of endurance contest and were hiding under the bed covers. They could hear something playing with the vacuum cleaner, and my mom just bolted, leaving my uncle to suffer alone. He finally springs out of bed and runs and literally dives off the top of a rather steep stairway and then proceeds to float to the bottom of the stairs where my grandpa just happens to be waiting with open arms. They all swear there's no way he would have been able to jump all those stairs. Another time, 
my mom was kind of a tomboy and was outside getting beat up by some neighborhood boys and she looked up at her house and could see what she believed was my grandpa just sitting there in his study window watching she couldn't figure out why he wasn't helping her when she finally got inside and confronted him he swore up and down that he hadn't been in his study all day long apparently they had babysitters that would run out of the house in the middle of the night because of scary things that happened and in later years when I was about 10 or so my mom worked at a local restaurant after closing and cleaning the place up it was always rumored that the place was haunted and she had so many scary experiences that she eventually wouldn't go alone so my stepfather started going with her and experience some of the craziness himself. She would put up all the chairs on the tables, turn around briefly, and turn back, and they would all be back down again. But apparently the ghost's favorite game was running in and out of a large metal door to the kitchen. One night, it kept happening over and over and over again, until finally my stepfather put a tall bread rack in front of the door. A few moments later they heard a loud bang and went to check. Something had run into the door so hard that it left a dent from the door hitting the bread rack on the other side. The only other thing I can think of comes from my older sister. She lived alone in an apartment complex, also rumored by many to be haunted. She says that she was washing her face in the sink one night and looked into the mirror to see another face behind her. She said that she was calm and told them that she didn't mind sharing the space as long as they left her alone and didn't try to scare her or something like that. I was 19. I would walk to Denny's from my house every evening, leaving around 8 or 9 p.m. There I would hang out with my friends, smoke and drink coffee and play cards until 2 or 3 in the morning. This one particular evening I left later than usual, probably around 11 p.m. or so. The Denny's was 5.7 miles from my house, so it was a bit of a walk. So I'm walking along like I had dozens of times before. I get to the wooded area that always got dark, and I started hearing music from a house off the road. Just heavy bass drums with a real steady beat. Not a big deal, because people out that way always had big parties. I continue walking, but the music doesn't go away. I stop and listen real carefully, and it sounds more like drums in a continuous loop. There's not another parallel road for a couple of miles from where I am, so it cannot come from a vehicle. I continue walking, and for about two miles, I continue to hear the music. It never gets louder, and it never gets quieter. I stop and listen again, and it sounds like Native American drums. I walk again, quickening my pace. As I walk, listening to the drums that are following me, I start to smell gunpowder. I walk a mile listening to drums and smelling gunpowder. I may have started getting really creeped out, so I'm not sure if I heard footsteps behind me or if it was just my imagination. I only hear them for a couple of hundred feet. Then I walk into a clearing in the woods, and it all disappears. The drums stop. I don't smell gunpowder. No footsteps except mine. Just me walking. I get to Denny's entirely shook up, but I don't share my story for a few days. I hope you enjoyed your visit. Please stop by again sometime, won't you? I have many more stories to tell. After all, they are just stories. Or are they? Until next time, take care of you. Bye-bye.